Now, Singaporeans looking to start their app developer journey can now tap on a new course aimed at complete beginners. Digital workflow company ServiceNow and NTUC Learning Hub aim to train a thousand locals by 2024. And they say the skills learned will allow those attending to contribute to the digital transformation of their companies. Both organizations inked an agreement to bring these low-code developer courses to the masses. Now, low-code applications are built with minimal coding and can be developed more quickly, making it suitable for even novices. Participants can pay for this 20-hour course with the help of Skills Future credits. ServiceNow is also helping local firms with their digital transformation. Workspaces here at its new innovation center are available for companies to stress test new technologies. Communications and Information Minister Josephine Teo says this will go a long way in making digitalization more accessible for all. This is one of the most promising aspects of generative AI in particular. The idea that uh, these skills can be democratized and many more people can acquire them with some help. By lowering the barriers of entry to tech skills, we certainly want to see more people being able to create digital solutions, if not for their employers, for their companies, even within their own communities. Skills are the new currency of the future of work. And Singapore is no stranger to this dynamic. But in recent times, there has been a shift in the emphasis on skills beyond traditional qualification, more so to complement the growth of emerging economies such as the digital economies. Well, upskilling is crucial for digital transformation, according to a report by NTUC Learning Hub. More than 9 in 10 employees and business leaders say that acquiring tech skills are necessary, yet fewer than 3 in 10 employers had sent their workers for digital training in the past two years. So far, most employees are only familiar with a handful of tools, and the report shows that the top five they use daily include the Microsoft Office software as well as Zoom. But the top five technologies business leaders have identified for the next two years are completely different. They include cloud computing and big data. While the majority of workers agree there is a skills mismatch, there are problems standing in the way of their training. Almost three in five blamed their heavy workload. And the report stressed the need for employers to strategize to overcome such challenges before their business can actually digitally transform. And to share more about this with Dave Wright, Chief Innovation Officer at ServiceNow, and Anthony Chu, our Chief Core Skills Officer at NTUC Learning Hub. I'll start with you first, Mr. Chu. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Now, this agreement that Excuse NTUC me. Learning Hub has uh, signed with ServiceNow, uh, in retrospect, it's an obvious solution to an existing problem. But when before you signed it, what inspired the partnership? And why now? Yeah. So, you know, as part of uh, uh, NTUC, we're here for the workers. And to that end, because uh, we look at the skills of the worker, if they have all the skills, we know that they will be able to have a better job and therefore better lives. Uh, we believe that every worker should have technical skills as well as horizontal skills. So horizontal skills, we mean uh, technical, uh, this, uh, digital skills as well as the soft skills. Now, this uh, partnership means that we want to create more citizen developers. So, and we believe that this citizen development is a tech-like skill and it will continue to grow. So, uh, and we feel that everyone should have some form of digital development skills. Uh, why now? Because we see an increasing uh, adoption of ServiceNow platform because it is fairly easy to use. And we think it will continue to grow this adoption. And therefore, we see that there's a lot more need to train workers. And therefore, we are inspired to quickly form this partnership. And Mr. Chu, I believe NTUC Learning Hub's report actually pointed out the importance of upskilling in digital transformation, which we all agree, but on a realistic level. I mean, how far will these low-code courses, which is, comprises all of 20 hours, go in actually tackling the knowledge gap you know, uh, that they have with the actual IT department and, and also dealing with the talent shortage in the IT sector? Yeah, so 
so in every company, right, you will notice, right, there are a lot more end users, right? So there are more people in the operations, in the HR, in the finance department, and there are usually, you know, a handful of IT professionals. And all these end users will have a lot of all these uh, automation needs. So imagine if they have all these needs and there are are lack of IT people to help them solve their problems, then uh, they will not be able to enjoy the benefits of automation. Uh, So when we are able to use ServiceNow platform, enable them to use this, and they will be able to uh, do all these uh, development uh, application so that they can uh, develop some uh, application that is bespoke to their specific needs and wants. So once everybody is enabled, right, then you see you don't need to rely on the IT department. You know, every time when there are some changes in the SOP or processes, they can do it themselves. So they they, they reduce the reliance on IT professional. So this will help supplement the IT shortage you know, of IT talents in, you know, the company and at the national level, you know, the IT sector. Oh, uh, Mr. Wright, uh, let's bring you in on this conversation now. You are Chief Innovation Officer at ServiceNow, which is a digital workflow company. Uh, um, What Otelli just asked and was partially answered by Mr. Chu was that he felt that if people had some ability and they were enabled, as it were, then they can start to solve some problems on their own. Now, uh, I presume that is one way of saying, if you have something, you will have more motivation to continue to do more, to learn more, to build on that knowledge. But are are there other ways in your program, in your agreement, to sustain that motivation, incentivize greater learning at greater depth? Yeah, so we see this as a... This is effectively a, a, an entryway into something that can change what someone's career trajectory is. So the capability to go in there as a subject matter expert and not have to explain to a programmer what you want to build, but to be able to build it yourself gives you an insight, not just into how you build those applications initially from a low code perspective, but also enables you to then start a journey that perhaps allows you to go in a different direction from a career perspective. And we. We globally now have a a gap in skills. And even when you think about this nationally, this capability to be able to to go out there and solve problems yourself, but then be able to decide if this is a a way that you want to perhaps advance your career even more and fill in some of these opportunities. We see this as a a great way to go. And and globally, we're actually trying to enable a million people in this. We actually have a, a concept called Rise Up that we use to not just train people, but also to help people find jobs as well, because we do find a a skill shortage on the platform itself. Mm. Uh, Mr. Chu, um, you know what Mr. Wright said about, you know, having that goal globally, but in Singapore, so we're targeting a thousand, uh, you know, of them to be trained by 2024. How do you determine the success of this program? How are you going to monitor its success? Yeah, so... um... Uh, one uh, thing that we hope that they will take away firstly uh, is that uh, they will start implementing their first IT project, right? Because it might be a little bit more you know, daunting for them to do it, but really take the first step. Otherwise, you, you know, you learn all these skills and you don't implement it, it's going to go to waste. Uh, secondly, uh, the ability to you know, keep practice and practice just like in maths, you get better at it, right? And... Uh, we also hope, right, that uh, in addition to learning this uh, local development, uh, is the import that they realize the importance of uh, problem-solving skills, because you know, as they look at their existing processes. So we hope that they will, you know, reflect and think, "Hey, am I? Is my process right?" Because you, you know, you do not want to automate this. Uh, 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 a terrible process, right? A lousy process. So we hope that they have these problem-solving skills. So how do we monitor this is, you know, we hope to check with them that at least some of these citizen developers, right, they have some of these projects, they can showcase these projects to their, you know, uh, their management, and hopefully that become, you know, a domino effect and, and the, the, you know, the, the fire keeps burning bigger and bigger. Yeah. All right, Mr. Wright, uh, In a way, there's no point training up employees if employers also do not keep pace with the development of their employees. 
How do you see coding being relevant to employers, particularly in, say, relatively non-high-tech industries such as, I don't know, arts or communication-related sectors? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. The, the whole point of, of building applications like this is to, to be able to, to automate some kind of workflow. And the, the inherent result of that is you generate a better experience. So it makes no difference whether you're a, a university or a school who's dealing with scholars or whether you're a, a hospital who's dealing with clinicians or patients or, or even if you're part of a government agency and you're dealing with citizens. What you're doing is you're creating a better experience for the people that you serve. So for me, that, that whole concept of generating a better experience is not limited by any industry. Everyone has the capability to go in there, look at the core service that they provide to their customers and be able to improve that in some way, whether that's external customers or whether that's internal customers. So there's so much opportunity for people to go in different directions with it. I think it's a chance for us to really look into this app and hopefully we'll have the time to, you know, actually sign up for the course. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us tonight. Uh, Dave Wright, Chief Innovation Officer at ServiceNow and Anthony Chu, Chief Core Skills Officer at NTUC Learning Hub.